Good evening, family. This is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I am your proactive agent of change who communicates so that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Tonight is Worldwide Wednesdays, uh, and that's uh, when I take on worldwide subjects and ideas. Um, what you're looking at is a towel I received from a ministry that deals with social justice in Los Angeles. And it says, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream that comes from Amos. Amos chapter 5 verse 24. All right. I'm always praying and hoping that we will begin to be an interactive uh, community of people who um, work together to, um, to learn and to grow and to be where we are to be. Now today, I am, uh, my heart has been been really moving and heavy actually on a couple of issues. Uh, one was that I've become a Snapchatter. I've become a Snapchatter. And on Snapchat, I uh, am able to connect with some of my younger students. You know, I've been doing youth development work for many years, um, for over, uh, over a decade, working with young people, 18 to 24 year olds, helping them to get their um, education and get job related skills and get them back out into the workforce. Um, there's this one man in particular uh, that I've, has been heavy on my heart. Uh, I'm gonna call him C.A. Now C.A. is a young man who I love deeply with all my heart. C.A. Um, came to me as a young, you know, wannabe gangbanger uh, from the city of Los Angeles. He was actually living right at the edge of Compton. And uh, C.A. had a, a low self-esteem uh, he used to call himself something like Fat Boy or something like that. And I used to say, man, don't call yourself that. You know, you're not fat. You're a child of the king. You are somebody. You are important. But um, he would, uh, the thing is that he just kept that identity. And then I realized that he kept on wearing, uh, here in Los Angeles area, if you're wearing a bunch of red, then you, uh, you claim the crip, uh, the blood set. And if you wear a bunch of blue, you're in the crip set. So um, I was trying to encourage him to get up out of that kind of stuff and told him, listen, you were not raised this way. For you see, I know who this man's parents is. This student parents is, happen to be two really loving, godly Christians. I mean, they love God with their whole heart, mind, and soul. The father just commits all of his time working with a program, um, a rights of passage program uh, in Los Angeles, helping young boys uh, who are younger than 13. I think they work with 13 to 15, help them get their lives together. Uh, and um, I didn't know he was even in that, uh, that this was this boy's um, father until I met him uh, after I had been working with his son, trying to help him get his high school diploma. But the thing is, now on Snapchat, I see him turning up all day long. I see him with little twists in his hair. Not, you know, I wore dreadlocks too, but little twists in his hair, little blunts in his mouth, talking about, um, uh, using, talking about women in a very negative and profane way. And it really disturbed me. It bothers me. And I'm thinking that, Father, we need to help. We need to lift up him. He's going to be a, our representative of young um, people who have lost their way. Young people who have been raised in good and moral and godly homes, yet they have rejected the wisdom of the elders. They have separated themselves from the comfort uh, of their, and the wisdom and knowledge of their parents. And now they're out there um, turning up everywhere, putting themselves at risk. Now, this young man used to tell me about how he, God has spared his life so many times how he was running and, and they were about to kill him, but he got away. And, but yet he's putting his life at risk and that, that's really a burden for me. So before we get off this program, I want to solicit you. I want to ask you, especially those people who are going on the rebroadcast, that you would lift up the young man. His name is C.A. For, um, for this program, C.A. We're going to lift up C.A. We're going to ask that God will help him, that God will clear up his mind, that he will, that God will open up his, um, his eyes and help him to see that his parents love him that, uh, and God loves him even more and that God holds no shame or no guilt on him, that he wants him to be reconciled with him. He wants him to get back on track, uh, get his life in order, pray for to get his college degree, high school diploma, get his college degree, whatever it is. But I'm praying for that young C.J., CA today. So Father, uh, and all those young brothers and sisters in every city, because you know, the truth be told, you guys, I have a burden for the urban male. I have an urban for all people, but for the urban dweller, 
like me who grew up in these cities and these cold streets, you know, lived in North New Jersey, lived in Baltimore, Maryland, um, you know, lived in Washington, D.C. Yes, live in Los Angeles. I mean, come on. I've been living in some urban communities, in urban sprawl, and I've seen the devastation that has been happening to young people all over the world. And I'm like, enough is enough. I'm tired of the people selling our young children drugs that are overpowering them. Yeah, when I was younger, marijuana was, uh, you know, pretty much okay. But now they got this stuff I call the stunner. They got these young people smoking up this dope. And now they're just getting stuck, getting uh, dropping other kind of uh, chemicals and things. And they're just getting, losing their mind, losing their souls over some craziness, being turned up for nothing and not using their time. Here's a couple of things that God showed me that were Three, what I'm calling, I'm going to call them for lack of a better word, dangerous deeds. Three dangerous deeds. Uh, and, and here's the thing. What I have been discovering is that in order for a person to find work in this modern world that we're in, especially in um, the United States of America and maybe other um, uh, industrial program places where, um, uh, where the technology is highly moving, if you are not able to handle a computer, Beyond, I'm not talking about paying the computer just to play Black Ops or any of those um, those uh, first-person shooter programs. I'm not talking about using the computer to play games. I'm not talking about using the computer to to, to, uh, to do Snapchat or to jump on um, Facebook or whatever it is that you do. Um, uh, that whatever that is that you do, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about using the computer to submit your resume, using the computer to write a cover letter. Using the computer to apply for any kind of job. Now, almost all, even the fast food restaurants cause you to have, you have to use a computer to do that. So there's, I see uh, in this world, a huge digital divide coming and grow, uh, growing in our community. Separating those people who have uh, technological in, insight and ability away from those people who don't. And I'm praying that people like Chris, I said his name, I didn't mean to say his name, C.A., uh, People like him and others who are trying really hard to um, to trying to get work and, and skills that they would go beyond just putting Snapchat on or, or posting up you know um, videos and, and, and crazy stuff on their on their um, social media things. I'm praying that they will be able to use that energy, use that strength to write that resume, to write that cover letter, to apply to that college, to apply to that education, the vocational skills program, and I'm, this is what I'm praying for. But here's the thing. I have discovered, even in my own personal um, quest to um, start a new career track, it's been difficult for me because I'm, I'm sitting on the phone. I got my, my laptop here. I got my, um, what is it, my uh, tablet here. I got my um, cell phone here. And all day long, I'm getting... Tweet after tweet after tweet from the people that I'm following. And I'm just like trying to respond to that. I'm like, I found myself being just caught up. And I see these three dangerous deeds or what? The three dangerous deeds, one of the one of the first dangerous deed I want to deal with is distraction. Yes, distraction, my friend. The dangerous deed of distraction. It's not necessarily bad for you to um to get, you know, um to tweet or to post or to um or to uh, whatever it is that you do, Snapchat. It's not necessarily bad from that. But when those things become a distraction from your goals, a distraction from the things that you are here to do, a distraction from your work, then it becomes a problem. And what I begin to see is that the world is being is designing and creating multiple distractions. I, they call it entertainment. Now, you can be entertained. And entertained has a concept. As I, if you look up the word, you're going to find that entertained has a concept of being captured by a muse or an idea just stuck in that place. As long as you're captured, as long as you're entertained, you're not doing the working on your own goals and your own objectives and your own business. Because you're what? Being entertained. You've been captured by that muse, that idea, that concept, and you're stuck right there. And I'm, I'm afraid that now we have all these distractions all over us, that even as well, even as on the medium, where we're supposed to be taking care of business, trying to get that job, trying to get that application, trying to, um, trying to get that education, trying to do some research, that bing, bing, there's another alert, there's another text, there's another tweet, there's another whatever it is coming, there, there's another update coming your way, and then you, or you find yourself, instead of taking care of business, you're taking care of the trivial stuff, you caught in these little, um, um, what I call traps. Yesterday, I talked to you about something called the World Wide Web. And the World Wide Web, to me, I, I reminded the people that with the World Wide Web, it is designed off of the natural concept of a spider web. And although a spider web has connections to all these different things, for the spider, the web is a tool that he uses to feed himself, to bring in the income, to capture um, prey. 
But for the prey, for the person, it is a trap. And I'm praying that we will have wise discernment on how to avoid these traps. Some of the things that's been going on is that the system has been trying to, the things that are around us, uh, DJ Khaled called it they, they have been trying to separate us from our elders. So we don't have any wisdom. We're not listening to the elders. We, in fact, at odds with them because we think all the elders are dumb and they don't know what they're talking about. But they have experience and wisdom. But we separate them because they're not up with the latest gadget. They're not doing the latest thing. And we separate that. For that, then we have to suffer the punishment of doing everything all over again and starting up. And it's almost causing a retardation. So the first dangerous deed that we're dealing with today is distraction. Oh God, deliver us from the spirit of distraction. Do not allow us, Father, to be caught and, and captured by this television program or that or that um, uh, reality, quote, reality TV. That is another major distraction that is just, ooh, it's almost driving me crazy because all this designed drama keeps us sitting up there looking and we seeing black women and black women beating each other up over some dumb stuff, throwing drinks on each other, doing the craziest, stupidest stuff that I ever heard in my life. No, everybody want to get vengeance. Everybody want to get some, no voice of reason, no godly direction, no wisdom in the matter. Just beautiful bodies and they selling it. Oh my God, don't get me talking about how the presentation is. It's always, you know, um, the goodies on top. Everything you can see, you can see everything and anything you want. You remember want to see? It's just crazy right now, young people. I do not want you to get caught up. This is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I am your proactive agent of change who communicates that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Right now, we're talking about three dangerous deeds. I just got, deal, got finished dealing with one dangerous deed: the deed of distraction. That when we're in this world, we are, we have the, we have the challenge to jump over the digital divide. That if we want to stay relevant, we want to stay uh, up to date, we want to stay on purpose, we need to be able to interact with these machines, these computers, these, um, these, all these different ways. Because now you can't even get a job unless you are able to master a computer. You, you want a job? Okay, go over there, sit at that computer and put your application in. And that's intimidating. Imagine a person who don't know anything about computers. Now, you, they, 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 the marketing is so awesome now that my child comes home with an Apple computer. He got that in school, so he's learning a dependency on Apple. When he gets older, he's going to be dependent on that thing. But it's supposed to be a tool, my friend, not a, a crutch. We, we still need to know how to read and write and still need to have, know how to have math. Just the other day, I was, I was rejoicing at Christmas time where everybody in my family, all my children could read on a six, at least a sixth grade level or better. And that blessed my heart. That made me happy because I, and I know they know how to use a computer, but I'm praying that they will be able to use that computer beyond just first person games, Roblox and, and Minecraft and all that kind of stuff. All oh, they have some good things in them, but do, are they, what do we really need for our success? Are we using these mighty powerful tools that we have at our, at our ability to do? We, we have access to know more than we ever knew, but it seems like we're doing less than we ever were. Oh, God, help us and deliver us from the first D, the D of distraction. The second D is the D of deception. I realize that the folk are trying to, uh, are trying to deceive us into thinking that we are our things and that we have to have things to be happy. No, we are not our things. And they can take everything from us and we still have what the most important thing, breath. We still have life. One day I want to have an interactive discussion with some people on what life is this. Uh, I like the old story. One of the movies that used to come out, I think, is a, a, a bubble gum. Life is a bowl of cherries. And I, that's pretty cool because cherries are good, but they also have some pits in it. So that's one way of saying. But I think life is more powerful. Life is, life is the opportunity for us to co-labor with God. Life is the opportunity for us to, 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 um, to, to, to see what it is to, to allow our spirit to explore this world, to, to think a thought and see that thought come into reality. Life is opportunity. Life is a wonderful thing, but there is a deceiving spirit that makes us want to uh, think that um, we are things and we got to have this and we got to have that in order to have happiness. The deception is tricking us to make us spend all of our time and attention on things rather than on relationships and on people. Rather than on, on spiritual development, rather than on or, 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 or civic and cultural work, uh, just, just keeping us in craziness. One big deception is the deception of racism. Why we got to spend all day long talking about we're black or we're white or we're this or we're that. That's some stuff, that's some boo-boo to keep us from finding out the real thing. They do something stupid. They have us riding in the streets. It's almost like they, they're joking our chain. They're deceiving us. Boom, watch this. I get the black people. They all going to watch. Watch this. I do something stupid. They're going to all go do this. Watch this. I'm, I'm tired of the, them whipping us around with their deception and their trickery. 
trying to make us think and get our children all caught up on some humble, get them all, get, get, get uh, I don't know if you know about this, but some people get these uh, ankle bracelets, get them all caught up in the system where they have all these um, charges against them. So they all got them on, the, on these either electronic digital um, leases or they have them on parole or probation. I'm tired of the deception. Come on now. We cannot do it. Like I'm getting them sound like my son. Come on now. We can't just keep on allowing people to deceive us and make us think that our parents are dumb and they don't have any wisdom. We can't just allow people to, to deceive us and make us think that we are our things that we have to pursue after the things that they put in front of us. As long as we sitting in front of that television and being programmed by that television, it's a problem. Because that thing is called television program for a, a, a program for something. It's programming us to be desirous of things and not a desirous of people. Desiring us to, 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 to kind of like get used to the, the lowest common denominator of humanity. Watching the news is the most depressing thing I've ever done in my life. So I've watched very little of that. Just enough to get the information and get back out of there. Because it's the low common denominator. Who shot who? Who killed who? Who stole from who? Who's bombing who? It's crazy. So I'm praying that we get lifted up from the deception, that we will not be caught up by the things that we see, but we will go in, we will, we will allow God to help us. So the first dangerous D is the D of distraction. It's pulling a lot of brothers and sisters off the track. We spend all our time doing wick, wickety whack stuff rather than doing what we're supposed to do. Oh, it's all right to turn up and, and you know, dancing and, and, and dapping and all that kind of stuff. But when is our time for us to stop shucking and jiving and spend some time reading and studying and growing and becoming the, the, the dynamic um, uh, force in the world that God would have us to be? Avoid distraction. Avoid deception. The last one is look out for darkness. What am I talking about? I'm not talking about the beautiful darkness from which God creates things. I'm not talking about the beautiful darkness that, 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 that highlights the wonderful stars in the sky. That's not the darkness I'm talking about. I'm talking about that low, negative, dark, evil, raw kind of darkness that make people want to do vengeance and, 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 and jealousy and wickedness and backstabbing and just and just um, just foul mouth profanity. I'm talking about the dark. Let's get away from the darkness. We don't have to be throwing up dollars in clubs. We don't have to do that. Fuck. We work so hard for our dollars. Then why would we sit up there and throwing up dollars in clubs? Why would we try to make it rain when God wants to bring rain to our uh, uh, rain and blessings upon us? We don't really have to make it rain. Go home. Take that money home to your wife and your children. Buy them pampers. Take care of the stuff that we need to be doing. That's what we need to do. Get our savings accounts together. Learn how to spend our money and do things wise. I'm sorry, but here's the thing. I'm praying that we get delivered from these things. The darkness. We got to let go of the darkness. Let go is trying to do scams and trickery to trying to get over and get up on somebody. No, the good guys do win in the end. God will be fight with you. But if you're going to be deceptive, if you're going to be stuck in uh, or creating some more distractions for somebody rather than trying to walk in the light. Listen, he said walk in the light because God is in the light. Let's not. He said men love darkness because their deeds are evil. Come on, men and women. We got to get up away from there. We got to move away from that kind of environment. Listen, these three dangerous deeds, I'm hoping that you will help us in. And we're going to pray before we go. But these are the dangerous deeds that I'm dealing with. The deeds of distraction, the deed of deception, and the deed of darkness. Now, God told me another thing. He said, listen, you got them dangerous deeds, but here's what we need to do today. I created humanity to be a focusing unit. Whatever you focus your attention on, that's where the blessings flow at. So some of us are focusing our attention on negativity. We're sitting up there looking at the reality shows and it's driving us insane. Because it's not reality at all. It's a bunch of trickery and forces that help us. And I don't like the way they represent, represent us. They got our sisters looking crazy. If I was anybody, I would not want to come up upon a sister, not the way they, they present them on TV, because they look like they're crazy. Throwing drinks on people's faces, uh, uh, maligning people, everything they say, they popping off and going to hit somebody. That's, oh God, deliver us from that madness. It's, it's trickery. It's deception. It doesn't do anything for our, our, our development. It doesn't do anything for our good. Some of us need to just unplug that doggone program and do something different. Read a book or learn some insight. Go another way. So here's the thing. So God will have us today to focus. The word focus. Get with me on this word. F-O-C-U-S. Focus. Focus your attention on that thing that you want to have. I got three things that we should focus our attention on. But I want you to focus your attention. You know what's important to you. The, uh, the Spirit of God doesn't just talk to me. The Spirit of God talks to you too, right? Yes, the Spirit of God talks to you. 
and he says things and give you ideas of what you're supposed to do. So here's three things I'm focusing on. They're the W's. We did the D's, but here's the W's. The one thing is to focus on work. What do you mean work? What do I have to do to make my situation better tomorrow? Somebody need to just go wash some clothes and get ready for school. Somebody need to pack their bag and write and, and make a lunch. Somebody need to work, work, just focus for a little while on something that's going to make your life better. I know a lot of rappers want to get their mamas out of, uh, out of their house and buy a house for them. They want to buy a Maybach for themselves. They want to drink Ciroc and all that other kind of stuff. That kind of wild lifestyle is not conducive, is not helpful for all humanity. We, you only supposed to do miller time sometime, not all the time. It's not turn up every day, all day long. We have to regroup, recreate, reassess, reevaluate, focus. Focus on what? You know what you're supposed to be focusing on. For me, it's focusing on getting that full-time income that's going to bless my wife and family. Focus. That's what I'm focusing on. So I'm hoping that you will focus. Focus on work. Whatever is work, um, whatever work that you have to do to make your situation better. I love Bob Marley. Look up his song, Work. You know, uh, work is something that we should definitely get in for, uh, into. That's the first W. The second W on this particular thing about focus, we need to focus on witness. What are you talking about, focus on witness? What kind of legacy, what kind of testimony are you leaving for your children? What kind of testimony are you leaving for those people who are watching you and observing you? Are you do you have righteous deeds and righteous acts? Are your hands clean? Are your heart pure? Are your motives right? Are your deeds uh, righteous? What Focus on your witness. How are people observing you? Even when nobody's watching, are you doing the right thing? Do you have integrity on your heart? Do you do right no matter whether people are watching or not, knowing that wherever you are, God is there with you? I see my daughter's coming close. She, she might want to interact with me. I'm going to give her a chance to interact with me in a minute. But right now, she's sitting at my feet listening, discussing, uh, thinking about the witness. So we're going to focus on some work, and we're going to focus on the witness. What kind of witness does our life say? Does our life say the only thing we value is, uh, uh, is uh, a drink? As I like to say, the only thing we value is uh, how our body look, whether we got the nice um, Louis Vuitton or whatever other kind of clothes, designer brands, because they, they got us all twisted, twisted and got us go, or going, going crazy with the things because they want us to have a whole bunch of things and not have be full of the spirit. So I don't want to be here long. I'm already going longer. And I don't know what's happening with me. I feel a transformation happening. And I think you're feeling this along with me. So if you are, I want you to begin to try to catch me when I come on these broadcasts. And let's interact together. Let's dialogue together. So we talked about one, we're going to focus on, we're going to focus on work. Another thing we're going to focus on, we're going to focus on um, our witness. What is our life saying about what we believe? Do we really believe God? Then if we believe God, then we're going to exercise faith. We're going to be holding faith for God to do something. I'm hoping that tomorrow I'm going to come and tell you about a miracle that I'm holding God faithful for. I'm holding faith that God is going to work out a miracle in my life. He's going to do a supernatural work. He's going to do a, such a blessing that it's going to just blow people's mind. They're going to say, how in the world did you get over that situation? We thought that, uh, we thought that the enemy had you down and out. We thought you were on the street destitute and one busted and disgusted and weren't going to ever get up. Yeah, I might have fallen, but I will get up. Uh, how am I getting up? Not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. That's how we all going to be getting up. Oh, there's a great getting up morning. Yes. And new mercies are there every morning. So don't give up faith. Don't quit. Don't fall out. Don't faint. Get up. Tomorrow is going to be a new day. If you got to go to bed early, go take a nap. Recreate yourself. Meditate in the morning. And let's get on to a new day. The last thing is we're going to focus on, we talked about focusing on work, we focused on talking, uh, focusing on witness, and we talked about now we're going to focus on worship. Now what kind of worship am I talking about? Now there is something that's going on in our churches that really is, I don't know what they say. It's, it's like we're going to have church. And people, ah, they falling out because they worshiping God, but they, they're not doing any work. They're not doing any witness, but they so-called worshiping God. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not mocking what's going on. I'm not mocking worship God. If it's real worship of God from your heart, that's good. But the kind of worship that I'm talking about is to acknowledge that God is worthy of our time. And he's worthy of our energy. He's worthy of us acknowledging his presence with us. 
He said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have not come to condemn the world, but I came to bless you through the Christ, the anointed one. So God wants to roll with us. And we. I asked, I asked earlier this week, who are you rolling with? Are you rolling with the Most High? Are you rolling with the Creator? Are you rolling with them busted, disgusted people who next thing you go, they're asking for a ride now. They're rolling with you now. But as soon as your money and stuff is gone, they, they're kicking you to the curb and going to do something else. Who are you rolling with? I choose to roll with the Most High and the Righteous One. I choose to roll with the Holy Angels and all those people who are walking in the Spirit and are thinking and bringing about positive vibrations. And Bob Marley said, positive vibrations? Yeah, positive. I only want to live with that kind of consciousness and awareness. I want to have this kind of consciousness and awareness that as I, as I meditate on God, as I allow God to come into my spirit, as I allow God to come into my mind and come into my thinking, I invite you. I, I expect God to guide me and to empower me. So on a daily basis, I'm confessing. I am guided by the Lord. I am empowered by the Lord. Especially as I'm going through this year, coming right out of Kwanzaa, I'm, I'm sensing God as um, doing a new surge in my life, a new, giving us a new fire, a new desire to communicate that others might be healed, liberated, and appreciated. Today, I want you to be free, free from deception, free from distraction, free from darkness. I want you to focus. Focus on what? Focus on work. The work that you need to do to make your situation better for tomorrow. Focus on what? Focus on your witness, your lifestyle. Make sure that your life is something that your children and the people behind you, your mother and father can be proud of. Focus on that. Don't just sit up there looking at TV all day. They ain't happier that you getting high all day. They ain't happy because you can you can roll a blunt. I'm out, I'm out here in California, so they can roll blunts all day long. They can go to the Green Cross and pick up stuff all day long and be stuck on stupid for all day long. Who is winning for that? It's like DJ Collins said, they don't want you to be uh, successful, so they want to give you the super stunner herb, uh, marijuana, whatever, to, to keep you stuck on stupid. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Come on, child of God. We don't have to keep on doing this. We got something that will keep us better than anything else. We got the spirit of the living God. Let's get high in the spirit. Let's get high on God consciousness. Let's get high on awareness. Let's get high on love. I see you, dear heart. I'm almost ready for you. And I'm my, my daughter is so, so she she been hurt hearing me and talking with you today. And family, I'm going to try to come with some fire every time I come to you. Fire of love. Fire of devotion. Fire of care and concern. Fire of a good word. So I've talked to you about those things that I want to share with you today. I'm praying for C-A today before I go. And the last thing I want to do before I leave, I did put on my, uh, my hashtag, uh, Cologne. Are you familiar with what happened in Cologne? That on New Year's Eve, a bunch of guys, they say about uh, 20 or 30 guys, saw about three or four females walking in the crowd watching the fireworks in, in, um, in Cologne. And these guys claim, and they said they were um, Arabs and North Africans. I don't know what they were. But what they did was when them young ladies came by them, they start touching on them in inappropriate places, in inappropriate ways, took their cell phones, took their stuff. What is, and I had to think about what that's all about. First of all, it's, it's the they who want to keep a division going on between humanity. The Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, keep all of them fighting. The Buddhists, all of them fighting against one another. Let's time out for that. It ain't about one world religion. It's about one humanity, one people, one God, one purpose, one destiny. We are all locked up in this destiny together. We can create a new world with our own hands and our own mind and our own thinking in cooperation with God. And God wants to help us do it. He wants to usher us in. I'm trying to say right now, wake up. It's time for us to wake up and not be deceived. It's that time today. Yes, I'm glad you're back with me. It's wake-up time. I'm your, um, Omar Muhammad. I am your proactive agent of change. And right now, I'm dealing with this one issue. What I discovered, what happened in Cologne, makes me upset. Because what I realize it is, because when you hear the testimonies of the women, they say, you just women. We can do what we want with you. Whatever kind of worldview, whatever kind of concept will cause you to disrespect the humanity and the divinity of another person just based on their gender or their sexual orientation is out of order. Listen to me. It's out of order. I don't care what spiritual community you come from. If you're judging people by their sexual orientation or judging people by their gender and you think that you can oppress them just because they're in a different gender or judging people by the color of their skin, then it's a problem. And Pastor Omar has an issue with you. I'm raising up the consciousness to another level. So we don't want to be able to, I got one daughter, she's waiting to talk. But I am concerned that my daughter will not be able to walk around safely because somebody was just going to grope her because she's a woman 
oh no, I'm binding that idea up. I'm trying to tell us that we better recognize, I like what the Indian people say, namaste. What is that all about? I recognize the God in you. And I will not disrespect the God in you just, to, just because you have a, a feminine form. Or you have an effeminate form. Whatever way it's going, I'm not having it. We need to trust God. We need to see in each other's eyes that God is in us. Now, I didn't talk way too much. I'm going to come back next week. I'm not going to do it all today. I'm going to come back tomorrow with something called Thankful Throwback Thursdays. So here's my lineup. Mondays is Monday Matters with Pastor O. Whatever happened in the weekend, we're going to try to wrap up, tie up, and get things together. On Tuesday is Table Talk with Pastor O. Get yesterday's Table Talk. It was off the chain. Off the chain, we were dealing with some real, real issues, issues about whether the boys should be wearing dresses and stuff, it, all, all kind of stuff. Today is Worldwide Wednesday. It's global concern. All over the world, that they're, they're casting the worldwide web and they're making it the digital divide so wide that so many people who are in this system will not be able to get work or, or anything without, without being able to handle going through the process of getting jobs through a computer. It's different. And what, what, what compounds that idea is something I discovered because while you're working on a computer, you're constantly getting email alerts, text alerts, updates, Snapchats, or just con just stuff constantly all the way coming at you. And that's why I said we have to be careful of the three Ds. The D of distraction, the D of deception, and the D of darkness. You got to get the replay to go back through that. So now we will after we we'll talk a little bit about um, this other part of it, which is what we need to focus. God made us focus in the unison, so we need to focus on something. Whatever we put our attention to, that's where our thoughts and ideas are going. So if we focus on work, God's going to give us ideas and ideas about work. If we focus on school, God's going to give us ideas about school. If we focus on doing right, then God's going to give us ideas about that. God's going to bless us with the ideas that we need. Now, I'm going to end this program with, first of all, my daughter, do you really want to say something, Sophia? Um, uh, sure. Yes, I'll what do you want to say? I'll what about, say. what's on topic with what we've been talking about? Do you want to be on camera too? Um, sure, we'll be on camera. All right, we're going to speak a little about, this is a little bit of time for Wait, the Wait, Naeem youth. wants to too. Come on, come on. I don't want to be on camera though. Come on, come over here, just talk right here. Because I'm going we're gonna pray. We're gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna let the young people. Because we have to. We got to. Um, what Jesus said: suffer the little children come to us. What I discovered about this when we get ready to have the children, I discovered this. I'm learning so much from my children during this Christmas break. I had a big old flood of water in my backyard because we have a so-called Nino's rain. I'm thankful for the rain, but my back uh, patio area was flooded. And my young son said, man, you should." I had an idea. I was going to take one of the laundry baskets. He said, no, take that trash can. Dump that water. So what I did was I took that man's idea because I realized the children said, uh, said some place in the scripture said, a child will lead to the children have godly knowledge in them too. And they give you wisdom, they give you knowledge, and they give you instruction. I took that uh, knowledge from my son. I got him almost all that water out of the back. It was good. So when I say I'm inviting the children to come in, he said we should be like the children. Listen to this. I'm going to catch you with this. This is going to be a freebie. If you and I become like children and we use our holy imagination, God will bless us abundantly. You want to be in, on, on camera? Okay. So now, what do you want to say? Terrorism doesn't have a religion. Yes. Thank you. This is from the mouth of a young boy. Terrorism does not have a religion. He came on scene anyway. Mm -hmm. Terrorism does not have a religion. And, and, and I'm thank you for you saying that, Naeem. That's an interactive. Because I wanted, the, the scripture that God gave me is that uh, he did not give us a spirit of fear, <coughs> but love, power, and a sound mind. Those people who are terrorists, they want to keep us in fear, keep us to be afraid so we can give up our rights and privileges. Those people who did that stuff in Cologne want the women not to be able to walk in the street. Somebody had the nerve to say, you just keep yourself arm distance from people. No, they need to keep their doggone hands off the people. That's making me upset. I'm mad about that. And I, Okay, I'm going to calm down. Thank you. I'm going to calm down. Yes, Sophia, what do you um, want to say? I want to say that, um, um, I just want to say that it would be like, just think of it like a man doing that to a woman. It yeah. would be, I mean, like a woman doing that to a man. It's like they were getting... They would get like in more trouble yes. for some reason. Yes. But then the um when a woman when a man touches a woman, then it's totally different. Yeah. Well, in my case, Sophia, I, I agree with you. It's not it should not be that way. I'm saying that we need to fight this. We not we should not have women, men just uh taking and groping on women. 
and the workplace, there's laws about that, it should not be happening. And I'm praying that your world will not be like that. So you will not be groped on, touched on, felt on without consent. That it would be nothing like that. So you're right. We should have equality. That's why I said earlier, it's not about Sophia and anybody else on this program. It's not about your sexual orientation or your gender. Recognize that the person in front of you is a, a, is a, is a representation of God in human form. I said it, that's right. It's a reaper. The breath that that person has is the breath that comes from God. He is repre representing himself in us. And we have to recognize that God consciousness, God awareness is in that individual. And we should not mistreat them for any reason, whether they have a different sexual orientation or not. It's just out of order. Yes. So I think it's just like, do unto others. As you would have them do unto you. Yes, thank you. My daughter is reading something. She said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is what's in my house. Is, uh, I got this from the United Nations. It's one of the, it's one of the most, it's, it's actually the most multicultural image in all of my house. Why? Because we are to do unto others as we have them do unto us. It is the golden rule. If we want people to treat us right, we need to treat other people right. So I want you to get a little glimpse of that. Thank you. Now let's go for a little while here, and I'm going to get off this program because I've gone way longer than I normally do. But I felt like it was warranted. I felt the Spirit of God moving on us. And so let's take this time now to pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, I thank you that you created all of us equal. I thank you that you created all of us in your image and in your likeness. I thank you that all things that you are, are perfect, that you're whole, you're good, you're right, and there's no, um, no uh, sense of darkness, no sense of uh, deception, no sense of uh, distraction in you. You are all that and everything that we need to have you to be. So we thank you for who you are. We thank you for how you are created. We thank you for how you work things out for your good. So right now, Father, I'm asking that you would, um, I'm lifting up one young man. His, his, he is C.A., but I'm lifting up him. For all young people who've been deceived, all young people who've been distracted, all young people who have been who have been basically just steeped into darkness. I'm asking that you would set the captives free, that you would remember his the prayers of his mother and his father, that you remember the prayers of his mentors and people who are, who are around him, and that you would hear their prayer, that you would shake this thing up, that you would turn it around, that <laughs> even tonight, that you would bring him home. That he would be like that prodigal son in the Bible who spent all this stuff and say, you know what, I'm going home to my heavenly father. I'm going home to my family. I'm going home to the right values and godly values. Please, Father, we're praying for that young man and all young men in every city there is. Whether it is in Cape Town, I've been there. Whether it is in Kingston, I've been there. Whether it is in Nairobi, I've been there. Whether it's Mubasa, I've been there. Wherever it is, if it's D.C., Philly, Baltimore, New, uh, New York, um, uh, it, it, all of Dallas, I've been there and I've seen the people and I'm praying, oh God, please help the people help these young people who are fighting in this new era, they don't even know what to do, they don't even know how to act with these with the power in their hand, the power of a, a smartphone, give them wisdom, knowledge and understanding, not to be distracted, not to be deceived, but to use that staff, use that power mightily for the kingdom of God I do thank you, I do praise you I do honor you today Help that young man. We lifting up CA, but we lifting up all our brothers, all our sons, all our people. We pray that you break that pipeline from the cradle to prison. We pray that you help the brothers who are in prison, the brothers and sisters who are in prison, come back out and find work and responsibility. Help us, Father. These are the issues that I have in my heart. Then, Father, now I'm praying also for women, especially because because some young people on Twitter brought me to awareness that we need to pray for. Uh, all women and particularly African American women because they're getting the bad end of the stick on all kinds of areas. When I saw what happened with that sister who did not use her mouth wisely but did not have to lose her life in prison over the misuse of her mouth. The truth is that life and death is in the power of the tongue. In that case, I really think that's a real serious and concrete element of what's going on there. However, it should not be in vain. Let us, Father, I'm praying for you, that you will help women. Help us train, change the way people think about this world. That a woman is not less than because she has a, gen, a different genitalia or a different uh, mammary gland than others. 
but that we will recognize her godliness, we will recognize her worth, and that we will respect it, we will honor it, we will lift it up. I, I, I don't know, even, even sometimes lift it up even more because I see all my elders as my mothers. These are my mothers, these are my sisters, these are my, these are my, the people that, that have to, somebody's going to have to marry my children. Come on, God, help us today. Help us lift up our level of humanity and lift up our level of consciousness in that area. And finally, Lord, I'm praying that you would break all this human trafficking in any form that is going on. Break the prostitution rings. Break the slavery rings. Break these situations that are, that are coming that are causing our people to be sold into slavery again. Break up slavery. Give us the will and the wisdom to not participate in the slave trade or the sex trade or anything that's going to exploit women and exploit our children. Thank you, Father, today for this Worldwide Wednesday. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for giving us another opportunity to lift up our voice and to use what you have given us for good. Remember, this is Pastor Omar Muhammad. I am a proactive agent of change who communicates that others might be healed liberated and appreciated. You can find me on all the social media networks. Check out what I have on there. I'm always going to try to give you something that's going to uplift you, something that's going to encourage you, something that's going to bless you. You can check out my, my blog spot at Lizway, The Voice, L-I-Z-W-E. Put Omar A. Muhammad and Lizway. That's my South African name. You're going to find my blogs. If you want to check me out on Twitter, go ahead and find me on Pastor underscore Omar underscore on Twitter. If you want to check me out on YouTube, find me at Omar A. Muhammad. If you want to check me out on Instagram, find me at Yaso on Instagram. Wherever you find me, you're going to find me in a positive vibration. Peace and blessing. I'm out. I